Game Builder Studio. Now we're going to set up the bird character. So let me just drag in the uh, the sprite sheet with the three different frames on them. And we need to divide these up into three, three separate frames. So we're going to need to add a sprite sheet. And on that sprite sheet, we will select the bird image and we'll select a divider. Just divide by the cell count so it'll count three spaces or evenly divide it across the image and there's only one row so we'll leave one in the Y now for it to show up we need to get rid of the old render and we're going to need to add a sprite sheet render now if I select the sprite sheet it should show up in the scene and we can scrub through the animation there we go. And uh, you'll notice that the size is locked because the size is controlled by the sprite sheet. Let's go to the spatial. Make sure the render is selected. And I will get rid of that collision shape and I'll auto trace the bird for it to have an exact outline. And you'll notice that there are multiple shapes in here in order to get that perfect outline now I want to scale this guy down to about half its size so I'll go to the render set it to 0 0.5 0 0.5 and I'll go back to the spatial and let me set up some of the collision information if I select a shape every time you select a shape the settings here change so if you have multiple shapes like this auto trace shape and you change the setting it's good to hit the apply to all shapes just a side note I'm going to set this guy this object type to bird and it collides with the ground and with the pipe We want it to be simulated because we want this guy to be affected by gravity. And I'm going to uncheck can rotate because we're going to manually control the rotation based on um, a, a defined angle as the bird is propelled up in the air and as it falls. We want it to be perfectly at a 90 degree angle as it falls. And if we just use physics to control the rotation, it'll, it will be more of a simulation as opposed to an exact rotation. We need something to cycle through the frames of the animation. So we're going to add a sprite sheet controller that manages doing that at a certain frame rate. I'm going to select the sprite sheet renderer. We're going to add an animation, call it flying check the box here to set it as the default animation select the sprite bird sprite sheet and we're going to start from frame 0 to frame 2 the frames in a sprite sheet start at 0 so frame 1 is 0 frame 2 is 1 frame uh, 3 is 2 and we'll do it at 30 frames per second that's fine and have it continuously loop so if I run this Alright, got the animation and we have the bird flying. Now, the bird is dropping because of gravity, but we're going to control gravity later on. And I'll show you how to do that. Initially, when the, when the game starts, the bird is just floating in the air. And then uh, when you tap, the game starts. So I'm going to add a logic component or a rules component. And on that, I'll, I will add a interpolate action. And we're going to animate along the Y axis. We're going to start. At its current Y position. 
and you'll notice it uses a relative reference. And we'll take the Y position and add about 10 pixels. And we want this thing to infinitely loop, so we'll put negative one, auto reverse, uncheck run to completion, and set the duration to about one second. Now I also need to add a property here to determine when the bird is flying, so I'll add a data container and call it properties. Add a property called is flying. Set it to zero. Because I only want this to play when that property is set to zero. Now we need to also turn off gravity because this guy is going to fall right away. And we're going to control gravity manually. So I'm going to set this to zero. There is no change gravity action at the moment, but I'll show you how to just change the, the global property using an expression. So gravity is at zero, and I will use a rules component. Call it control gravity. And we're going to check the gravity property every spatial component has a spatial manager on it and this is the global manager for all collisions and all spatials in the game and there's a property on it called gravity and that is a point object so I'll put dot y gravity dot y when that is zero and the user touches their mouse down on the screen anywhere we want to turn on gravity so we're going to change that same property I'll just copy and paste it this is a property reference this time we're going to change the actual gravity point object so we'll get rid of the dot y and we will set it to an expression so that we can use the helper method set point set the x zero we don't want any gravity along the x-axis and along the y we're going to set it to say 900 let me go back to the float the interpolate action I actually want to do 20 pixels and make sure I add some easing sign easing out let's run that okay now we have our bird floating now I'm going to add the logic for when you tap the screen We want to accelerate the bird the bird's velocity. So when the mouse is down anywhere, we need we need to turn on the is flying flag. Is flying set it to one. And we also need to apply some velocity. Now I could manually set the velocity here to a hard coded value, but I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to set up a global property and I'm going to call it max jump velocity. You could call it uh, max jump velocity y. We're going to set it to negative 800 because you got to remember gravity is going to be turned on when I tap the screen to 900 in the y. And the y axis is flipped in Game Boy Studio. So if I apply 900 
velocity, the bird in, in the global gravity, the bird will be pushed down. Now, when we apply a jolt or a, or a uh, velocity increase to the bird to move it up the screen, we have to move it in the negative value. So I give it a negative 800 value to push it up the screen. I'll go back to this apply velocity. Go to the spatial's linear velocity. I'm going to set the velocity point object to an expression. We're going to use the set point helper method. It's going to be zero in the x, and we're going to use a helper method called clamp to range, because we want the velocity to always be within a certain range. So we're going to feed in the current y va value of the or is it the spatial linear velocity y that is what the current value is and we're going to make sure that it always is a minimum of negative 800 which is the which is the max because you got to remember zero is greater than a negative value so because we're working at negative values to push something up the screen the minimum is that max velocity property so we're going to go to that minimum negative 800 and we want the max to be half of that so we'll divide that by 2 and this method will keep that linear velocity value no matter how much velocity we add it will always keep it constrained within that range save that let's run that okay now the bird is floating if I tap he, he jumps up the screen and, as it, and if I continuously tap he won't just fly way off the screen it'll be an incremental jump its rotation needs to be controlled manually so let's set up some global properties to be able to toggle this globally so we're gonna set up the bird fall rotation speed set that to say seven set up the bird max fall rotation we'll also set up the bird max jump rotation and these are the amount of rotation in degrees that we want to allow the bird to rotate. It would be negative 40 when it's jumping. Because you got to remember degrees, it's, it's at 0, 0 now. If you want it to rotate up the screen, you can go in the negative value. So negative 40 degrees would be here. Negative 90 would be pointing directly up. Regular 90 uh, will be pointing down. So negative 40 is what we want when it jumps. We want the nose to point up. The max fall rotation, we want it to be 90 degrees, completely vertical when it's, when it's pointed, uh, pointed down. And the fall rotation speed should be 7. And the bird jump rotation speed. Let's just set that to 1. I'm going to add a rules component. I'm going to say, call it logic. Fall rotation. We need to check that the bird is flying currently. So if flying is 1, then we'll do the rotation. And if the linear velocity of the bird's spatial along the y-axis, if it is greater than or equal to 0, so that means it's falling down the screen. As the bird falls, the linear velocity and the y-axis is going to be increased in order for it to move down the screen. So it's going to have to be above zero, and that's how you know it's falling. 
we're going to use a constrained property. to constrain the rotation value to an expression. This is going to constantly update. Now we're going to use that method again to clamp the value between a certain range. We want to feed in the rotation value to, a, to those global properties that we set. The max jump rotation would be the minimum and the maximum would be the max fall rotation. So it will constantly rotate. In order to do it we need to add the fall rotation speed. So it's going to continuously add this value which is 7 to the rotation and it's going to feed it into this method here that will keep it between negative 40 and 90 degrees. Let's run that just to take a look. If I hit the screen it starts flying and it does a nosedive. And if we were to just simulate this the rotation would just be simulated and would be an exact value so we're manually doing that now as we hit the screen to to move it up we add velocity to it. we want it to rotate back up to negative 40 degrees so I'll add a rules component call it logic jump rotation And here as well, we're going to check, make sure that it's flying. It is flying, set to 1. And we need to check here to make sure that the linear velocity, along the y-axis, is greater than 0. That's how we know it's moving up the screen. I'm sorry, less than 0 in the negative value. Uh, it's moving up the screen. We're going to use a constrain property because we want to constrain the rotation in degrees of the spatial to an expression. And we're going to use the clamp to range value again and we're going to feed in the spatials rotation and this time we need to subtract because we're moving moving it in the negative rotation value we're going to subtract the global bird jump rotation speed we're going to give it that minimum of the max jump rotation because the max jump is a negative value, so it's minimum. It's going to be less than, than this max fall rotation, so we're going to set that to the max so that it always stays within those two degrees. Save that. Now it's rotating too much so I'm not going to use the bird max fall rotation I want to set that to zero the max to zero so I want it to when it's jumping to always be between zero degrees and negative of the max jump rotation Alright, that's better.